to see you. I want you to start with a nice warm up in one hand. It doesn't matter right or left because you're gonna do them both the same. You're just turning it out in each direction. The goal is to get the blood flowing into the joint to keep the joint safe from injury. Lubricate everything, keep you getting stronger week by week by putting some stress on the muscles, the tendons, the joints, but just a little bit, just enough to grow. So you're gonna go side to side. This is my left hand, and now go into the right. You just do the other side. And I put tape on this staff so you can see when we slow down and we start to go into some of the more complex moves, you can see how I'm doing that. I've also changed the angle, see if that helps a little bit today. So I, I appreciate your feedback. If things work, let me know, hey, this is working. If you need me to do it a little bit differently, say I'm still not getting it. But let me know, leave it in the comment below. Warm up on this hand, 30 seconds. And now I want you to go from hand to hand. Your pinkies are gonna be together. Hi, it's good to see you, good morning. Just like this, palms facing the sky, and then you're gonna turn it out. Bring it back in, palms up, and turn it out. So this is gonna start to move your wrist even more. So there's more momentum, there's a little bit more kinetic energy in your staff. So this is gonna improve your stretch, but it's also gonna improve your strength, your ability to handle your staff, especially when we get into striking, self-defense, all those moves that you need to have great hand strength for, grip strength, so you don't lose your staff when you need it the most. So we're just going side to side, pushing it from here, here. Yes, we'll do cane in a little bit. We'll do cane after this one. Cane, nunchucks today. I think I have time to do a couple, a couple of extra. And a band, a resistant band workout. In case you're stuck at home, my goal is to help, if you're at home, if I can be of any value to you, because we're stuck inside, it's hard to get out and train. We don't want to stop training. It's important more now than ever, right? For your body and your mind. So side to side. And then I want you to continue to grow and strengthen. I'm gonna change the camera angle a little bit because I wanna show you, hold on just a little bit, how to progress or make this a better exercise once you've done the basics. This is episode three. So you've already done this for a while. You're now gonna do that first warm up move out to the side which is gonna strengthen the shoulder, especially the back of the shoulder and the top of the shoulder. When you're doing it here, it's working mostly the front. But now you put it here and you're gonna to continue to get strong all the way around that shoulder joint, giving you more ability. So when you strengthen or you strike, thank you, I appreciate that. When you strike for self-defense, you block for self-defense, you're able to have more strength, more power. You're not going to get injured you're gonna be able to better defend yourself. Now bring it to the other side, the other hand for 30 seconds, and make this part of your warm up today. Warming up is extremely important when it comes to this martial arts weapons. Good morning, hello. Side to side, front and back. And now, and I'm gonna change the camera again. We'll, we'll get the camera where I want it here in a second. I know I, I don't mean to make it so disruptive, but I put it um, on a platform today so that you can better see what we're doing because we're gonna go over the head today a little bit more than we normally do. This is episode three, how to train bow staff at home. This is great for beginners, and even if you're not a beginner, if you wanna progress and get better. So this is the same warm up move here. I'm just changing the plane. I'm overhead and the key here is that my elbows go straight. Get your elbows straight. You're gonna go side to side, and you're gonna feel this more now in the back of your shoulder as you feel your shoulders are getting stronger and you're getting more fit. Your posture is going to improve. All during a lockdown or during a shutdown. So if you have a COVID shutdown where you are, that's not gonna stop you from training. You're gonna keep training. This is how to train both staff at home for beginners, for intermediate, doesn't matter. This is episode three, side to side. I've got 30 seconds there and I'm starting to really feel it. Now I want you to bring it back down in front of your body. I'm gonna drop the camera one more time. And starting with your right hand, I put the blue tape on one side, the red tape on the other side. It's coming off there. 
and white just in the middle. And if you put some tape on the middle of your bow, that'll help you always find the middle. So when you start to do your spinning like this, and one side gets long and one side gets short, you can train yourself to slide your hand back to find the middle. You're gonna put it in the right hand first and you're gonna do a dipping motion to one side of your body and a dipping motion to the other side of your body. Joe's staff is a perfect option if you're inside especially because it's not as long and you can do all of the same spins with the Joe that you would with your bow. So I say have both. If you need a bow or a Joe or any other martial arts weapon, I put a link below in the description. There's an online store there you can see about what they cost and whether you're ready to purchase one or not. I always say, you know, use a broomstick first. Invest time before you invest your money. See if you're really going to like it, if you're really going to do it before you pull that trigger. All I'm doing here is I'm carving that sideways figure eight, side to side, to one side of the body, back to the other one, stomach up and in, abs tight. That's going to allow you to start to spin faster. And I want you to make a progression here today, just like you did with the two warm-up spins. And that is by putting your hand out to the side and doing that same spin to the front of your body and to the back. So we're really going to overload the shoulders, force them to grow stronger, healthier, more power for self-defense, more power for your spinning. If you like doing tricks with a bow, this is going to help you get there faster just by bringing your arm out to the side. Plus, it tra uh, trains your brain about spatial awareness, what's happening when, timing and distance, all that, all things that you need to really get good at martial, any kind of martial arts. That's why I like cross-training with a weapon. Cross-training, if you do striking martial arts, you grab a weapon like this, it now will improve your speed, strength, power, all the things you need to get better in your traditional martial art or your other striking or grappling. Your grip gets really strong with weapons training, and that helps a lot if you do grappling like jiu-jitsu, judo, wrestling. Now, to the one side and to the back, and then you're going to take it out to the side. Yeah, muscle memory is very important. Going in and back. Front and back, slow as smooth, smooth as fast. Gradually increase the speed. Pulling your stomach up and in, abs tight. Going faster and faster. And these are all forward motion spins. After 30 seconds there, you go back into your first hand. In this case for me, it was the right hand. And I'm gonna pull it up in the back and up in the front into a reverse spin. So now this is the same spin that we started with, but you're now gonna do it in reverse. And where I said before, think about carving sideways with your thumb, this time carving backward with your pinky. So pulling up, bring the other hand up, guard your face, make that a habit. As my uh, mentor says, make it habitual, right? You want to come up on both sides. Stomach up and in, abs tight. Gradually increasing your speed. Let me slow it down one more time so you can see. That's why I put the red and the blue there. And then, same as before, to the front and to the back of your body. See how close we can get without smashing the camera rig again. Go to the front and the back. Stomach up and in, abs tight, guard your head. Bring it into the other hand and pulling up with that pinky, up. Super slow-mo. Gradually speed it up, guard that head, stomach up and in. And one foot is in front of the other. This is my left hand, so my left foot is in the front when it's in the left hand. Make sure you have your foot in front, whichever hand's doing the spin. And that makes your body smaller, so it's easier to get the staff around. If you stand square, you can still do it, but now your arm has to travel farther to get around your body. Plus, it's better to learn how to fight behind your staff. 
Put the staff between you and the thread. After that, 30 seconds to the side, that's when you square it up in the same thing. Pulling it in, slow it down again. Gradually speeding it up, get that guard up. And now I want to go into some basic strikes and blocks. And you're going to do these, put them between your spinning. The spinning, I don't know if you can see them starting to sweat. Get your heart rate up. It's going to burn the fat on your body, leaning you out, making you stronger. And then in the middle, you're going to practice striking. I got to take that piece right there. I don't like, that was distracting me. All right, I'll fix that later. So holding it like you're doing push-ups. One foot in front of the other. It doesn't matter to me which one. Just step with one foot in front of the other. Pull it in to your chest. Make sure your elbows are in and not out. And you're going to strike and strike. The first strikes here are simple, basic. Defend yourself immediately. Punch through their chin. Go through the temple for self-defense. Striking, striking, striking. Hard and fast. And bring it to a short, abrupt stop here hitting the top of this arm from here to here. Now switch your feet and do the same strikes, but going into the knee, into their knee, striking two, one, two, again, stopping it right there. You're gonna do 30 seconds up, 30 seconds down, harder, faster, And now we'll go back to a spin. I want you to learn another trick. Now, the trick is kind of the wrong word. It's more of a technique. Think of it in terms of technique. And um, it is a bow trick, but the trick is really it has a, a great purpose. It's got great value. So I want you to learn how to, yeah, we can sweep the feet. Sweeping is usually going to be this motion instead of here. The hand that's sweeping is going to come palm up and you can sweep. Let me see if I can fix that camera angle. I'll show you and then we'll get back to that spin. From here, usually using your hip, sweeping, and you can go lower and you can go lower, sweeping and then come back up and spear strike. There's a lot of ways. One of the forms that I'll teach you, one of the bow katas, usually the second one has a nice leg sweep in it leg sweep and then it's got a jumping motion and change position it's got a lot of strikes and, and when you go down from this strike that's when the hand changes and then sweep here and then in under the chin all that kind of stuff we'll go into that we'll also do some of the ray park darth maul spins i'll show you one of those today that's in that's in this episode episode three but right now over the back of the wrist it, it's the same warm up that you did, but when you come up, open your hand. When you go the other way, open your hand. And the key is slow at first. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. I want it to be the right angle for you to see what my hands are doing. Slow. You can do it fast. You will do it fast. Let me say that. You are going to be able to do this very quickly, but at the very beginning, slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Open the hand. Let it balance going over the metatarsals. Someone said it's metatarsals, not the wrist. Yes, you're absolutely right. It really is going over the back of the bones in the hand. And then the other hand, 30 seconds, 30 seconds each side. Been working with the Boken a lot lately, the sword, getting ready to do some more. Haven't done a sword tutorial in a while. I'm gonna do some sword workouts, some Boken, Japanese Boken, which is what you train with if you wanna get good at the, uh, ki the kin, the, um, what's it called? <laughs> I don't know why I can't think of it. Katana. If you want to learn how to use the katana, the Japanese katana, you, you start with the boken. So my shoulders are sore. That was what I was going to say. It was a little sore. This feels good on sore shoulders, by the way. When you, anytime you have soreness, stiffness, grab a bow, grab a martial arts staff. Martial arts long stiff. It could be salambam. Maybe you do the Indian style salambam. Kirapati, I'm not sure if I say that right. 
And then the Gurkhas, they have, what is it, Gak Gakta, the Gurkha style. Good morning. Anybody from India, Bangladesh, from the Indian diaspora? But that's what you're doing. You're going over the back of the hand. Now, what I want you to do is mix it up. You're going to do wrist roll, wrist roll, and then the other one, wrist roll, wrist roll. Good morning. Wrist roll, wrist roll. Let me go slowly. I turn it. I take it the same way we did when we warmed up. I turn it out. Open the hand. Bring it back. Open the hand. Take it to the other hand. You're just adding this motion to this training. Episode three, how to train bow staff at home. Number three, I want you to start to do more things where you're going from one hand to the other hand, where you're transferring or passing the staff. In this case, it's with wrist rolls. Wrist rolls. It's really nice to see everybody this morning. I know you guys are pretty diverse all over the world, right? Good morning. One side to the other side. And then like before, speed it up. And now I want you to turn it into a strengthening exercise. You're going to use this to make your wrists really, really strong. Your wrists, your forearms, your hands. And what you're going to do is you're going to start with one palm down, one palm up. And the palm that's down is going to be doing the wrist roll. So you're going to wrist roll around that palm, the one that's down. So from here, yes, well, good afternoon. From here, you're going to push down, unless it's 0535. If it is, good morning. Pushing down and then bringing it to a stop. Now this hand is down, this is my left hand. You're gonna push it over the back of the other hand, bring it to a stop, and you're gonna to start to go back and forth. Let me slow down again, let me back up so you can see the red and the blue. Red side is now on my right. Red side is now on my left. It'll be on one side and then the other side. And now to get more strength and better handling of your Japanese bow or your martial arts long stick or the long staff or your Silambam uh, stick. I'm not sure if there's an Indian name for the stick. Anybody know? Glad you're here. You can always watch this. Watch this multiple times. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe. I need that help. I need your help with that. I need your help to make this channel grow. So pushing it around to the other one. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I didn't know anybody listened to those. I need to do more of those. Um, I was looking around here, though. I got to keep the lights on. So I'm selling everything. COVID's really slowed us down quite a bit. And I had this really sweet vlogging camera. And uh, I started vlogging. And I thought, I'm not vlogging right now. I got to sell that camera. So it's funny you mentioned the podcast because I did that with, uh, got that for the podcast. All right, so one palm up, one palm down. And the goal is to start getting other people. I've got a lot of friends who are really high ranking. You're welcome. This is all for COVID. This is for all of us. You know how they say when you go into a store sometimes, if, if that happens for you, and they say, we're all in this together. And you think, no, we're not. <laughs> you still have your job. I don't, or whatever it is. Um, this is how I feel like we're all in this together. We're all in this together. I appreciate that. I'm going to do more of them. So you're going to push around, stop, and around the other way. One side to the other side. And what's happening is you're going to feel this now in your arms, your shoulders, your hands. As you start to increase the speed, you're creating massive amounts of energy in the staff, and then you're stopping it and immediately going back the other way, and immediately going back the other way. And what I want you to try to do once you get good at it is keep your hands either touching the staff or touching the other arm. So you learn how to slide your hands like this and like this in this third episode of how to train bow staff at home, especially during COVID. We're all shut down. If you're shut down, going over to the back. Yeah, it, the world was changing anyway. This, this is the truth. Digi digitalization, uh, 5G, like around here, this is West Palm Beach. Around this area, one of the biggest jobs, one of the easiest jobs to get is security guard. 
so many places, so much money down here and so much poverty and so many people with gated communities and security guards everywhere, both armed and unarmed. But one of the largest growing businesses in this area that a lot of people aren't paying attention to except the hedge fund managers are robotic replacements for the security guards. Good. It's my pleasure. The point is that was coming pre COVID. All those security jobs are leaving. All the driving jobs are transferring. They're going to be driven by the machines, the robots, the warehouse jobs, factory jobs. We know it, right? They've been saying it for years. The time is now. The COVID just gets us there a little faster. So we had to adapt and shift anyway. That's the beauty of martial arts. You have to be adaptable. It's not good. It's not bad. It's different. Now what do I do? What's next, right? Spend five minutes feeling sorry for yourself and then get up and go do something. All right, so you've done that strength in here. We're back to using the staff for self-defense. Now, the next thing I want to show you is this grip. This is more of the traditional Japanese striking grip for self-defense. Blocks, blocking, motion, uh, twisting motions, blo either blocking or they grab the end of your staff and you're going to literally twist them off, shoving, spearing motions, both this way, under the chin, this way. So we're gonna talk about that now and how you use this immediately. The first time you pick it up, you have to defend yourself. You don't have anything else around. You find a stick, you get behind it. You put the staff between you and the threat. You're standing behind it, you point your thumb at the staff, or at the threat. Stand behind it, Point the thumb at the threat. Thrust. Just go straight in. Ah, oh, it's popping up again. I'm gonna have to switch it. I'm here, point the thumb, thrust. And all you're doing really is putting a big piece of wood, hard wood, between you and the person who's a threat. Maybe it's someone with a knife. Oh, thank you, Merry Christmas. No, you know what, that's more than enough. Please, I am, I'm not starving. I've got many, many options. I will always fight, and I really, but I really do appreciate that. But one of the things that you can do if you're struggling, look around and see what you're not using and sell it. I've seen, I've worked with so many people and said, hey, let's, let's start moving some stuff around here. And then it's just like turning on a little bit of water. All you gotta do is get the water to flow a little bit, and then it comes out, it gets fresher and fresher, it fills things up, get a drink, and it's, and it's when you have nothing that people freak out and they, so, but I appreciate, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much for that. Merry Christmas. Point the thumb, thrust. From here, this is one self-defense move. I'm gonna show you on this, here it is, this bag here. Let's say this is the threat, it's coming at me, maybe he's got a knife, and I don't have the knife on me, but I'll, you know, I show you all the time. The, the blade of a knife, the typical blade is seven inches. I, I looked it up, seven inches. Sometimes it could be a kitchen knife. Maybe it's 12 inches or 11 inches, 10 inches. Or maybe it's like a Bowie knife or a fighting knife or a machete even, maybe 16 or 18 inches. I mean, that's a long knife, but this is 72 inches. If they, no matter how big their knife is, I still have that reach advantage when it comes to self-defense. So I want you to practice as part of your training. I want you to learn spins. I want you to learn tricks, all kinds of things. I want you to go behind the back, whip it up over your head. I want you to learn how to, we're going to do this today. This is palm spin. I want you to learn how to do a palm spin with your bow, but I also want you to do, I, I would love to, I, if I can, the problem is I have little kids and I have to get them to school. So I'm not always able to, uh, like I drop them off there, I come here and I make the video. When I can, I will. From here, I point and I thrust. If this is the threat, you point it and you thrust. It's that simple. You go right through the middle of the threat. The second strike from this position is this angular strike coming straight down. And you can also stop it here. You'll see some people do this. I'm, I, I don't do that. I'm not saying you can't, but that's not how I do it. From here, striking here. And then the third strike is like a punch coming from the backhand straight across. So it's a vertical strike. Now this, this staff is, um, it's red oak, but it's old and it's dry on the inside. So this thing is gonna crack if I start smacking it against stuff. 
So let me grab a, a different staff. This thing right here, this is the monster, right? This thing's not gonna break. From here, there's the threat. I point, smash, coming down, coming back, straight across, and you can immediately, and you don't have to hit the head. You can go striking to the legs, strike to the groin. You can come down the other side and strike. But it's just, yeah, practical self-defense. I want you to be able to, yeah, but we're all family. I always say that you guys are my martial, and, uh, martial arts brothers and sisters, so we're all family. From here, you got to adopt that mentality. The whole world has to become our family. We're all connected. The problem is when we think that we're different and we polarize. You think this, I think that, we have nothing in common. That's never, never true. We're, we're breathing the same air. That's always true. From here, point the thumb, thrust, angular strike, horizontal strike, vertical strike, down the middle. So that's what I want you to practice in the middle of spinning. Give the spinning a break, give your wrists a break for a second, get behind it, thrust, angle down, horizontal, vertical, and then switch feet. And here's one way that you can practice changing hand positions. You know that we just did this. That's one way to practice changing hand positions. So if you want, from here, thrust, angle, or horizontal, vertical, and then change positions. Thrust, down, across, straight down, change hand positions, thrust. One, two, three. Now those are by all means, not all the strikes you can do. There's so many more strikes that you can do. Let me show you also though, the more traditional way to change your hand position. This is hand walking on your bow, or bow staff walking. I've heard it called a lot of different things. The reason for that, the reason for that is because we're all different. One of the other reasons is a lot of the martial arts that came from like Korea, Japan, China, um, Indonesia, India, a lot of the original martial arts came from India, started with uh, Dharma, Dharma Buddha, went to the cave, sat for nine months, came down and taught, or nine years, nine years, excuse me, came down and taught the monks how to defend themselves using the staff. So from here, uh, start with the light one. Start with the light one and get really strong and then go heavier, heavier, heavier. You can start heavier, but on the heavier one, you need to move more slowly. If your only option is a really heavy staff, start slowly. But the reason there are a lot of different words, English words, terms for Asian words is because people interpret them in different ways and they look for ways that make sense. So don't get stuck on, oh, well, he said this and he said that, she said this, he's wrong, she's wrong, she's right, he's right. It's just different. There's not good, it's not bad, it's different. Learn how to hear it all and then make your own mind up. Don't go on based on what someone else, see. you see a forum like on Reddit or Quora and, so, and people talk so definitively. This is the only answer, it's not. There's a million answers and it's like platitudes. Everything that's this is also this and the opposite. So if you say, um, you have to make money or you have to have money to make money. Yes, that's true. You don't need money to make money. Yes, that's also true. They can both be true at the same time. Martial arts is like that, but it's, it's tough. If you get stuck thinking about there's only one way, that's where you get lost. That's where you get stuck. All right, so good. Um, I appreciate that. So we're back to the spinning of the staff. And what I want you to do is go into the figure eight. And I want you to add wrist rolls into your figure eight. Thank you. Tom, I really appreciate that. Much, much love, much gratitude. You're going over one side. Like I said, that really helps. That helps a lot in many ways. Ways you don't even understand, I'm sure. You probably understand. We all understand, right? But you go to one side and you go to the other side. Let me see if I can show you from this angle. All your, you're, you're doing that same figure eight we did at the beginning of the warm up or the beginning of the workout. And then we're throwing in, remember when we did wrist roll, wrist roll? We're just throwing in the wrist roll. So on this side, it rolls over the thumb side. Your hand turns and takes it. And then when you turn it 
back behind your body. It goes over the pinky side. And so it becomes wrist roll, wrist roll. And I want you to do this for 30 seconds. This workout, episode three, usually when I do these, it's funny, I find that my third sessions are always shoulder burners. And it's because I get so excited. I assume that you've already tried the first two or that maybe you'll go back and you'll look at those. And that by the time you get here, you're ready to level it up. So 30 seconds doing this and then coming over here. Good morning, good to see you. And then to here. So here in beautiful south sunny Florida, it's uh, um, almost 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. 1000 for you international or military types. So you're going to wrist roll, wrist roll. And this is just another way to really bone up on your skills, to improve your skills of handling the bow in this third workout of how to train bow staff at home. After you've done that, I want you to then go behind your back. Nice. Sim and I can't wait, or Emma and I can't wait to talk to you in the Emerald Isle. We were supposed to go this summer. We had it all planned. Uh, my, my wife's cousins were all coming here. They all live in County Wicklow. And, um, or not County Wicklow, in Wicklow, wherever Wicklow is. County, whatever that is. Maybe that's, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. On the coast. And uh, yes, please do. You're going to go out to the side, bring it in behind your back. And then, as you can imagine, like the week that they were coming, oh, that's so funny. Maybe you were coming with my, uh, maybe you are my wife's cousin. I don't know. Um, she's got a lot, of, a lot of cousins over there. The Spallons coming out, out to the other side. So you're going to come out. The other side, your thumb is up. So they were coming over in March, the end of the month, spending like an entire month because you've got so much family here in South Florida and, and uh, they come, uh, you know, not that often. But it was like, it was a big number of them. They've got a lot of kids from a couple families or whatever. And then, like the day they were coming, they shut everything down. Travel, international travel. And then you're going to go straight up. Oh, you got to come to the coast and see the ocean. They were shocked because they, they swim in the, um, in the cold Atlantic, and we've got the warm Atlantic. They're great swimmers. Anyway, they didn't make, we were going to go there. We were going to be there in June for mostly a month. And uh, travel... We were probably going to go, you were going to come see Mickey Mouse. I was going to go kiss a Blarney stone, right? Bring it out and have a Smittix. I know I'm not a, I'm not a uh, Guinness kind of guy. I like the Smittix. We're coming up and back. So we go, we go to Patty Max. Patty Max here in Palm Beach County or in uh, West uh, Palm Beach Gardens. Patty Max Restaurant. Great restaurant, and I get, I get a whole plate of uh, meat <laughs> once a week. And my son gets the uh, cottage pie, and my wife eats a piece of salmon on some rice because she's so healthy and fit. And I'm eating a big, the grill. It's all kinds of Irish meats. Anyway, over, over your, I, I, I don't know how I got off on this tangent. I got all excited thinking about... Irish food, I think. So you're going from side to side. Yeah. A lot of people love the Guinness. My best friend, who's, who's Korean and thinks he's Irish, he loves the... Yes, I, I probably will. Yeah. I've got to, be, I've got to come to Donegal. Um, in, in Wicklow, there's a, there's a town called Shillelagh. And you know the shillelagh. You know the shillelagh is the fighting stick, the Irish fighting stick. And I love the shillelagh. And um, I wanted to get an authentic shillelagh made shillelagh because there's a there's a shillelagh maker in shillelagh. Yeah, I like killing it. And then we'll start doing these shillelagh things. All right. 
Uh, they can be. Uh, let, me, let me caveat that. Let me say that, like, if you, if you look, so this is what we're doing next anyway. We're doing that two-handed spin. If you need to know about overhead behind the back, we can talk about it, but it's really basic. Just to not hit yourself in the head, just get your elbows straight. Now, the two-handed spin, there are two ways. One is opposing grips, and as you spin through, there's going to be a, a bit of a hand change. I don't know if you can see my hand. There it goes. There's the change. As I come through, there's the change. We're not going to do that one so much yet. We'll do that in episode four. But here, both palms like this. This is the one that you see. You'll see both. And someone asked me the other day, how does, how does Darth Maul do that one-handed spin? Well, you, you guys already know how to do it. That's, this is the Darth Maul one-handed spin with the lightsaber or the double-bladed lightsaber. So from here, yes. I have a video. Put my name in. I have a whole video breakdown of the one-inch punch. It's already on YouTube. Yeah, you're, yes, thank you. That's, that was going to be the caveat. Don't spin if you're defending yourself. They whip out a knife. The worst thing that you want to do is start trying to spin your staff. If they come out, they've got some kind of weapon or you've got multiple attackers coming at you, and this is life or death, a real situation, self-defense, don't spin. Stand your ground. Hit this one. Smash that one. Come down here. Block if you have to. I always block last if I have to. But strike. Hit them before they hit you. And don't... Don't do, don't do spins for self-defense. Spinning in the movies works, but that's because it's choreographed, meaning that everybody does their move when they're supposed to, pulling their punches, the guy gets knocked back, it's camera angles, you don't see that he didn't really hit him, or if he hits him, the guy knows how to take a punch and roll. But that guy takes out a knife, I, I, I go from here to there really fast. I'm not gonna spin anything, and I'm not gonna do this. Any spin, it's like, um, it's like rhythm in fighting. You don't want to have rhythm if you're a boxer or Muay Thai or Taekwondo or Karate. Any kind of uh, fighting, anything that's like a rhythm. You have to change the rhythm constantly. Rhythms can be timed. If they know what they're doing and if they time your rhythm, they'll, they'll take it from you. Right? They'll take the staff. Yeah. It's... And there's a, there's a rule in fighting that says it's well known, it's well documented. The person who usually attacks first wins. Not always, but first. Yeah. So from here, you're behind, straight in. As, as soon as you realize it's a threat, no hesitation. You've got to train too. Train yourself as soon as there's a threat immediately. So, and the way you train that, if you're hitting a target or if you're practicing an air, you visualize. Oh, there's a knife. And then you come in. There's a knife. Smash, 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 smash. Keep smashing until there's no longer a knife aimed at you because it's about you or them. It's life or death. It's self-defense. It's a real situation. That's what we're saying. But back to the other one, spinning like this, Darth Maul, and he does all these cool things, and then he ends up here, and he's over the head, and you'll see he spins behind his back, and he comes here, and then he hits a pose in the movie, and he's got the red paint and the, the horns coming out, and he looks cool, right? The actor's name is Ray Park. Ray Park, brilliant martial artist and stuntman, an actor. Um, if you need to, but here's why you spin. Because a lot of people say, well, if, if I don't use it for self-defense, I'm not gonna do it. But I say this, this is extremely important. I'm gonna show, I'll give you a quick tour. Don't get nauseous. We're gonna go around the room really fast. Starting with this corner. This is the weapons, by the way. And look at that. There's a light staff. Somewhere in there is a lightsaber. Yeah, there's the lightsaber. Turn that off. You need to make one of those. Tons of nunchucks, right? But here, here's what I'm looking for. The jump rope. So boxers jump rope, right? Fighters jump rope. Fighters jump rope to condition the body the heart, the lungs, um, the legs, more than anything, the legs, because your legs have to be tough. And uh, traditional fighters, like karate or taekwondo especially, we don't jump rope, we bounce. I do both, I love to jump rope. So I jump rope, but we bounce, right? Bouncing 
it's, and they always say, well, bouncing, it's easier to move when you're bouncing. But when you fight, especially if you fight somebody who's really good, you're not gonna bounce that much. All right, good, excellent. And, and if you start doing those finger rolls, it's really gonna help with that. Yeah, I've seen it a million times. I made a, a video two weeks ago, Enter the Dragon, look for it, my last name, Pasquinale. Uh, I don't think I said it, I said Enter the Dragon many times. But I did the, I did the nunchucks. I showed you how to do all the things Bruce Lee does in Enter the Dragon. Um, what was the one where he fought the, yeah, I think that was it. Um, Game of Death, all the different movies that he's done. He's only, he only does a few different moves. And I have lots of videos, how to train nunchucks like Bruce Lee, do exactly what he's doing. But yeah, I love that movie. You jump rope to condition the legs, the heart and the lungs, get your footwork going, fast feet. If you're fast, move to the side, move to the other side, throw a couple punches, get out of the way, bob and weave. When you go in the ring as a fighter, especially Western boxing, you get in the boxing ring as a fighter, you're not skipping a rope. Good. You're not skipping a rope when you're fighting. You're, you're moving fast. You might move, you, make, you, slip, you slip the jab, the uppercut, knock them out for self-defense or for fighting in the, the boxing. But you jump the rope in training. When you fight with the staff for self-defense, you're not spinning. There's his face, smash it. That's his face, smash it for self-defense. So you're not gonna spin just like you wouldn't jump the rope with the staff. Back to boxing, right? You see this in a lot of gyms. By the way, this needs a lot of air. Good, um, when they lose air, always put the pump in. Most gyms have these pump it back up, but that's what it is. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna do this a lot, but you'll see, like there are a lot of different moves. One of my favorite ones is go, like go through and back, through and back, and then you start to go through, you start to hit it with your elbow, and the back of the fist, and then you bob and you move, and the whole time you're doing your footwork. Um, but you don't do that in the ring. You don't take this into the boxing ring to fight the guy or the girl. You do this in training, and it supports what you do in the ring. Now, the real, the real purpose of this, this is too short, by the way. This, if you do this, this should line up with your chin. I have it shorter because I, I work with somebody. We're working on this one. Not as tall as me, but that doesn't matter. From here, you want to be able to punch it and stop flinching all the time. We have a flinch block. That's a little bit different but I don't want to flinch at a boxing match. So that's what you use that for. This monster here, this is great for working those uppercuts, coming in and out to the body, uh, hooks to the head, coming, and it doesn't move much. So you, you really, and you really, so you really have to work on proper distance. This is about proper distance, which is here, because a lot of guys, they never extend their arm past that. But the knockout, yes, the knockout comes all through that range of motion. You've got to go through the full range of motion. You've got to be able to turn, pull, turn. And so this forces you because it doesn't move. It's not going to move. It's attached to the wall. And this thing, I can tell you, that will build your muscle. But this, if you don't know how to use it right, it's going to hurt you. This doesn't go in the ring just like spinning or jumping rope or hitting the bag doesn't go in with your um, the bow staff. This guy, I love these. You know what this is? This is just one of those, and, and, and I live down here. I saw this yacht. We were going over one of the bridges in North Palm the other day. Have you seen, um, yeah, you see one of those mega yachts? You hear about them, you see, you see them in the papers down here. There was, there was one of those, um, yeah, I don't know, it's just a wall bag or something, I forget what they call it. But there was, a, there was a, a yacht carrier and the whole thing sinks underwater and they, par they drive all their yachts up and they take it across to like the Black Sea or whatever. It just arrived here, it must have come from Europe. I've never seen, I mean, it must have had five, six billion dollars with the yachts on it. But my, I don't know what I'm, uh, oh, I remember. These go on the sides of boats so that they don't crush up against the dock and break the boat. 
so this, normally they're filled with air and they go between the boat and the dock. But someone somewhere, probably near a shipyard, said, let's fill that thing with water and then we'll hit it. And then it's, it's kind of like in the uh, first Rocky movie when he goes into the freezer and he starts breaking the ribs of the cows that, you know, hung up in the, the butcher shop or whatever. And that's what that feels like. So it's, uh, it's but my, per my point is each one of these has a different purpose. There's your Muay Thai bag, the long one, the banana bag. So you can, you can work your leg kicks and it, when you kick it, it feels a lot different than when you hit that and kick that big uh, black 150 pound. I said 100 pound before, it's 150 pounds. Um, I tried picking it up and I said, this is, this is more than 100 pounds, I had to weigh it. It's uh, leather, but, and, and, and so that builds knockout power. None of those go in the ring. So it's the same thing with your, your bow staff. With the bow staff, none of it goes in the ring, but it all is important. It's all valuable, it all has a purpose. Now, one more thing I wanna show you before we stop, which is, uh, because episode three, I decided I really want you to start working on your freestyle flow. Your bow flow, flow arts, whatever the terms are that you've seen that make the most sense to you. And what I want you to do is start with a forward spin in your right hand or left, doesn't really matter, but just your figure eight in front of your body. Now I've turned, so I'm orienting my body to the side. Facing you, it just looks like this. So that's all you're doing, just in front of your body, and then I want you to take a few steps, two or three, and then turn around this is my right hand to the right. And when you turn to the right, that's going to put you in a reverse spin. And then take a couple steps. And then when it's in the right, turn around and it goes back into a forward spin. So by stepping and turning your body, it will change the direction of the spin, but the spin never stops. That's what's so beautiful about spinning and bow flow. So I want you to practice spinning with one hand Couple steps, turn around, spinning now in reverse and turn and just practice that. Practice turning and changing hand position every time you turn, hand position every time you turn. And then do the same thing in the other hand, start with a forward spin, take a turn. And I said turn in the direction of the left hand, but I'm facing you, so I wanted you to see, it doesn't matter which way you turn. You can turn backward or forward, and it's all going to be the same time. Good, it's good to see you, I'm glad you're alive too. We're alive together. So you're turning and turning. Then, second level of bow flow, or um, you know how to train bow staff at home, this is episode three, we're talking now at the end, uh, it's not the very end, but, we're, but toward the, after you're warmed up and you're sweaty like I am, go into uh, freestyle practice, from hand to hand, and again, facing you, it looks like this. And you're just gonna walk forward and walk backward. So I'm gonna turn to the side, walk forward, walk backward. And if you have a small space, take two steps forward, two steps back, or walk in place. Walk in place. And then turn around. It doesn't matter which hand it's in, it doesn't matter which direction you turn. When you turn, you will naturally be spinning in the opposite direction into a reverse. Take a few steps. You really want to get the heart rate up. Jog. Turning. Turning. Just practice turning. One direction. And then the other direction. And as you do that, you're constantly changing from one hand to the other hand. And that might feel a little different at first, but you'll get it fast. Now stop moving. Plant your feet. Level three. Bow flow. Freestyle. One hand spinning behind the back, bring it in the front, turn it up, grab it. And I know we didn't do um, the butterfly spin here, but I'm just going to show you how to thumb the pinky, overhand grab, right hand, grab it under. Left hand continues to come out, continues that natural spin, grab it. So just do behind the back 
in front of the body, changing hands, in front of the body, changing hands. It, and it will be. The reverse spin is very elusive for almost everybody at first. Let me show you two ways you can break it down. Let me grab a sword. Here we go. It's like the Mulan sword, right? Mulan's popular right now. But think of the other actor that's in there. Uh, hidden, crouching tiger, hidden dragon or whatever. This is how you hold a Tai Chi sword, by the way. One way. Um, if, if I were to spin forward, think about slicing and slicing. Or think about a slap across the face and a backhand. That's the forward, forward figure eight. That's the forward spin. And if you think about it, you're disguising repetition. This is why it's also good cross training for striking, striking, striking. Now to reverse it, I simply drop it to the opposite side of the body. Drop the tip to the opposite side of the body. And now I'm going to pull it where before I'm pushing, now I'm pulling. So that's the first way I want you to think of it. Think of the spin as forward is pushing, pushing, and then reverse as pulling and pulling. So that's the first way you can think about it. So slicing down, and then think about slicing up, slicing up, or deflecting. A deflecting strike or deflecting block, both pretty much the same, is this is coming down, this is coming up. So it's knocking it away, right? Knocking away, knocking away. This is the same as this, but it's missing the second half. So if you take this, see that? By the way, if I were holding it in a reverse grip, it would look like that. But all you're doing now is you're just pulling it up and pulling it up. So you're pulling with that pinky, Deflecting, deflecting, these are all deflecting. I just deflected the sword in the other hand. The other side. Sweep with the foot or sweep with the staff? You're gonna hold it in this position. You're gonna slide it so that the longer side is away from you. Thank you. Yeah, just keep watching it. You're gonna bring it around like you're stirring, stirring something. This is a block, by the way. If they have a weapon or, a, or they're trying to punch or kick, you can block this way. If you bring this down to the leg, it becomes a sweep. So from here, if you bring it through, it's a sweep. If you bring it up this way, it's a block. You can do both. Hit them here and then hit them there. Spear first, spear, sweep. Bring it down on top of their head in the other direction. Bring it down and sweep through the other way. So you're either sweeping here or you're sweeping here. Got it in the wrong side of the body. Sweeping here or sweeping here. Remember what I said earlier, it's all, you're gonna use your hips, use your hips. And you have to use your hips because you're hitting their legs. Now, if they're kicking, everybody's great over here. Thank you so much. Um, I hope all is well with you and your family's healthy and strong and prosperous, sweeping and sweeping. So that's sweeping. We did a lot of different techniques. They weren't all, again, I call them tricks or people call them tricks. They're not really tricks. They're all ways of training. They all support something for self-defense. Whether, and you're not gonna spin in self-defense, but you're gonna spin in training. So when you fight, you're that much better. Just like a boxer jumps rope, does push-ups, punches bags, uh, throws a medicine ball at their stomach. In the Rocky movies, they put the string on his legs and he chased the chicken. And 
at the time, you know, in the movies, it's all fake, but Rocky, like Mr. Miyagi, Karate Kid, the, the, the real ones, the first ones, the very first one, he's like, go paint the fence, up and down, up and down, and then he's like, go wax the car, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off, and I forget what the other one was, paint the fence, car, I think he had to do something with the deck or something, and then, all of a sudden, yeah, ask me the question quick, because we're going to wrap it up. All of a sudden, the Mr. Miyagi starts attacking him, and he's blocking, and he's blocking this way, and he's blocking this way. And that's what this is. So spinning the staff, uh, traditional purists, the Kobudo guys, the Kobudo, the, uh, um, the Japanese uh, guys who just do the staff, a lot of them will say, oh, spinning is no good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're... You know, they would call it empty hand. You get rid of the weapon, your empty hand is amazing. If you're good with swords, staff, nunchucks, all of them. Kali sticks, you know, Kali sticks, the Kali Eskrima or Salat, Arnis, that's the other one. If you look at like the Jason Bourne movies or um, Taken, and I always forget the name of the one. I, can't, I don't know why I forget. You guys tell me all the time. Um, Benicio Del Toro and Tommy Lee Jones, who's probably down here for season riding his horse out at the polo park right now. Um, but they, they're, they're fighting. Yeah. The John Wick movies, all those movies are based on that Filipino Indonesian style of knife and stick fighting using the hunted. Thank you. I see. Yeah. Uh, I think T tells me every time too. No, you cannot. No, you can't block it. If uh, I shoot a lot, I was in the military. It's, um, you know, I know I, it's, it's just, it's, it's passion. I know all about different sizes and, and grains and all that other stuff. Um, there's no way there's, there's no weapon that you can block a bullet with no matter how hard your nunchucks would be. If that, that bullets, by the time you hear it, you're already hit by the time you think about it, you're already hit. It moves that fast. The, the timing that it takes from your brain to your hand, that's why we say in self-defense, always get in this position first. Open hand self-defense. If you, if you feel like someone might hurt you or attack you, you, you put your hands up. This is the international sign of stop. It, it's not as aggressive, but you're ready. You say, back up. Don't come any closer. I'll defend myself. You don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. You don't have to like me, but you can't call me names. Put your hands up and you say, back up. And then from here, if they throw that punch, you'll likely flinch into it and it, you'll deflect it. It won't hit you as hard. If your hands are here, even this low, right at the bottom of your chin, and they throw that punch and you see it coming, by the time your brain gets the message to your hands, you've been hit. You can't get them up fast enough. In the old days, I don't know if it's the Bondo guys or the Kali guys or whatever, they used to do this kind of, maybe it was the Jeet Kune Do guys, the one inch punch guys, probably Jeet Kune Do, right? Wushu or something, not Wushu, what's the other one? Master Wong. I love Master Wong. I'm not making fun of his, his accent, though, but you guys know Master Wong. Um, what is that? Wing Chun. The Wing Chun. Yeah, Jeet Kune Do, Wing Chun. You can't. There's no way to block it. Um, and, and this is the only thing that works. And we didn't know that as much as we know it now. We being people who are serious about teaching practical self-defense that really works. Until there started being cameras everywhere. Now, everybody's got a camera on their phone. So all these attacks, altercations, street fights, bullies, bullies attacking kids, um, fight, all the fights in the last uh, 20 years of Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, you know, it, it's all on camera. There are cameras everywhere. So now we see what really happens in hand-to-hand -hand combat, whether it's self-defense, on the street, with a knife, without a knife, multiple attackers, all of these protest, not protesters, what are they called? Um, Rioters, it's not even rioters, it's the, uh, they call them Antifa here, but they're, they're really the anarchists. All the anarchists coming around trying to destroy the system. That's what anarchists do. So, um, no, not necessarily. <laughs> and you don't have to be rough and tough, Adrish. It's not about tough, it's not about rough. It's a, it's a, it's a mindset. Some of the guys who speak the lead, it's like a dog. A dog barks, 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 unless it's a pit bull. Pit bull. Pitbull barks, they're probably going to bite you. But most dogs, dip, 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 and they bark, they usually don't bite. It's the quiet dog who's in there. That's the one you really have to worry about, right? It, because they've already moved past the barking. All the people who talk, 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 they usually have nothing. They've got nothing, 
right? But so your hands are, they're, they're not going to attack you is what I mean. They're, and, and they're going to pop each other in the chest and stuff. And it's, it's the quiet guys who say, back up. And, and, and it's about a commitment in here. It's not rough and tough. It's about you have the right to defend yourself. You have the right for people not to tease you, make fun of you, pick on you, push you around, call you names, take your stuff, take your dignity, take your life. It's your human right. I don't care where, even if you live in a communist country, still your human right, even if it's oppressed. And you put your hands up and, you, and like this, because you're not trying to fight. And you say, you have every right not to like me. You have no right to touch me. And, it's, and that's, it's a decision that you've made in your head. You have every right to not like me, not like that what I stand for, not like what I say. Yes, and then it's a commitment. If they come any closer, you will defend yourself. And, and then it's a matter of targets. What can you remove or destroy for self-defense? Their ability to see temporarily or permanently, breathe temporarily or permanently, their ability to grab or grab, smash. It's basic self-defense. And it's, that, and it's principles over techniques. It doesn't matter if you have a weapon, no weapon. What the weapon is, what your style of training is, whether you're Western boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, if you are a grappler, jiu-jitsu, judo, doesn't matter because it's always going to change. What matters is the decision. And people say all the time, self-defense is 90% mental. It's not. Not in my opinion. It's 90% physical. So get yourself in shape. Learn how to do some basic punches, get out of the way. Learn how to fight from behind your guard, right? Learn how to be in this position and speak up for yourself. That's the most, because not only are you speaking to them, you're speaking to yourself. When you say it, that's why it's a script. These are the, this is the script. You don't have to like me, but you cannot touch me. You don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. And when you say that to them, you're hearing that. And then when they go to touch, you respond in the way that you have to respond. And it'll come to you naturally. And you were born kicking and screaming, coming out of your mom's womb. All of us were. You already know how to defend yourself. You can get better at it, and you can get stronger and healthier and all those things. But that's the, bo the bottom line is the bottom line. It doesn't have to be a competition. It's not a fight. It's violence for self-defense. You're using violence against the other person's violence, and you're just gonna, you're gonna move faster, and you're gonna have these principles and that commitment. You don't have to like me, but you cannot touch me. You don't have to like me, but you can't come any closer. You don't have to like me, but don't call me those names. Whatever it is. And then if they come closer, you don't wait. <laughs> you don't wait for them to grab you. You don't wait for them to stab you 48 times. As soon as you know there's a knife, you're, you're immediately defending yourself. You have no choice. Yeah, it's my pleasure. That's what this is all about. This is a global virtual dojo. We're all part of this global dojo. And, I, and, I, and I, I really do appreciate every single one of you guys. I'm so grateful. And especially when you comment, you subscribe, like, all that stuff, and share. Please share these. If you guys share those, that really, really helps this channel grow. And, um, but yeah, you know, I've been, I've been learning for many years, and the best people that I've learned from gave it to me for free, too. They gave it, they, they, not for free. There was always a price to pay. There's always a price paid to action. Your price is watching. Your price is paying attention. Your price is then training. Your pri that's the price that you pay. The money's cheap. Oh, Hamburg. I haven't been to Hamburg since I was young, much younger, and uh, such a beautiful, I have so many fond memories. I went there just for three days, for a weekend, to visit somebody, um, uh, my godson at the time. Yeah, Hamburg, Germany. And uh, there was a beer fest uh, downtown. It was awesome. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Well, welcome to all of you. We're all, we're all one community, especially if you're all in COVID lockdown, like uh, Ireland, you know, the cousins are saying, uh, my wife's cousins were saying like, you can't leave the house more than a couple miles or something. It's oppressive to say the least. And uh, hopefully it's over soon, but it probably won't be. And, and either way, none of us, you or we, we can't control it. What we can control is how we, Keep our bodies healthy and strong, breathing, exercising, learning something new, training something, getting out of the comfort zone. You never grow until you're out of the comfort zone. Good morning. Wilson, we're just getting done. Uh, it's good to see you. Go back and watch this if you have time. In any case, thank you so much. Thanks for the donations today. And thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll see you in a few minutes. We're going to do the cane. Happy holidays.